Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's a revisit of the Jacob Jensen alarm clock that I've uh, just released a video on. This is only a few hours after releasing that video onto YouTube. The reason I'm doing this now is because obviously I've read the comments on that video and the mystery that I couldn't solve has now been solved. Uh, I won't be able to get this working but I'm going to show you what I found because I think I think it's interesting and I think there will be lots of people who watch that video that would also uh, not know where the light was in this. So just a quick recap in case you haven't seen it. I bought this as 40 off eBay and it wouldn't set the time. That was easy to fix, to set the time. It was just a dodgy little switch here, you know, these little clickable switches. So that was nice and easy to fix but then it turns out that the light wasn't working and that was actually mentioned in the description as well. So I thought it might be a dodgy switch for this one here, but it wasn't. So then I was trying to find out where the light was, hence the reason for this revisit video. So I couldn't see the light. I was looking all around the LCD, took it all apart. The only thing I could see was this thing hanging down. So I thought maybe that this illuminates up the whole thing, which then lights up the backlight of the LCD. But obviously those of you in the know would have been laughing at that because this is actually an inductor. And I believe the inductor, looking at the comments, is for the buzzer down here. And I sort of thought it was for the buzzer when I was watching back the original video when I was editing it and I did actually put that that was an inductor in that video there but not when I was doing it live just when I was editing it back because the tracks do go down here into this buzzer here. So uh, yeah luckily before my test and everything I didn't actually break anything which is lucky but at the same time I still couldn't work out how this thing lit up. In my mind I was thinking that maybe it had been left out of the factory but it turns out that this here is the backlight. Hence the reason for this video now because I've done a little bit more testing using my new little scope with my 9 volt battery there and also a little Timex Indiglo watch. Now my daughter got this watch or we got this watch for my daughter ages ago and basically when you press in on the uh, the crown here it lights up a lovely like luminous greeny blue color and then when I found out about this thing here I was thinking what have I got around the house that I could test with and then I remembered this watch it hasn't been worn in a long time now but this is made from the same material so now I can actually properly prove what the fault is on this so basically what we have here is something that I've never heard of it's called EL tape so you can google that I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly electroluminescence tape and you can also get EL wire so if you wanted to be fancy you could sort of design some clothing and stuff with EL wire and I don't believe it uses much energy at all so it's very energy efficient and it works on AC not DC because I think what's happening is the uh, I'm going to use is it photons or something but whatever it is let's call them the uh, the atoms or molecules whatever when it's on DC they're all flowing in the same direction but when it's AC it's alternating between positive negative negative positive and they're all bashing into each other and I believe when they're hitting into each other they're getting charged up and they're giving off a light so now to test this you have to use AC which is interesting because when I see a DC battery I sort of think that everything in here is DC now of course I didn't know any of this this is all from the comments now by the time this revisit video is released there might be even more comments but let just let me just give you a quick snapshot of some of the comments I got because they're really informative so let me just do that now and I'll sort of highlight the comments that I think you might be interested in As you've seen there, already there's quite a few people and that's the great thing about these videos. Because a lot of the time I don't know what it is, 
the people watching it do know what it is and then you see you can tell me what it is and then I can do a revisit video and then by me doing that I'm helping the people like me that don't know what it is so it's uh, it's really interesting because I remember that first video I was confused why there was a transformer here the reason we've got a transformer here is to step up the DC voltage from this tiny little battery this is all running off of just a 1.5 AAA battery into a high voltage AC so I don't know what the voltage is I think it's up in 50 volts or something I'll show you that on my scope so you're taking the energy from here and you're stepping it up to 50 volts uh, AC so what I did to begin with was I wanted to see whether I was told to press the button and then use a uh, probe it to see if I'm getting a reading so that's exactly what I've done so let's pop the battery in and I'm going to take you through what I've been kind of messing around with for the last uh, last hour so this is my new little scope. Now, apologies, this is the first time I've used it. So my terminology is all going to be incorrect. I don't really know how it works, but I'll just sort of tell you what I think is correct. So at the moment, we've got AC, DC, and I believe ground. So it's over on AC, because remember, I want to measure the pins here. So basically, what happens is this is supposed to light up like an luminous color, which then lights up the actual display here like that that sits on it like there lights up the display so you can see it in the dark but this is not lighting up now when I go across here it's not giving me any reading at all and I think that's right I don't think it will give me a reading but watch this I need to know whether this is at fault or this is at fault now again I was told on the comments and also looking on the internet that these things are pretty indestructible I could cut a big hole in here and it would still work as long as there's a path from here to here. So I'm a bit confused why this has gone 40, but I'm almost certain this has gone 40 because watch this. So I've got my battery in here now. This is the button I need to press because when that's on here, you can see lights there. Hope I haven't just broken that LCD now. But uh, watch this. So I'm getting my probes. I'm going to turn this little fella on. This is just a very cheap one. Uh, I don't sort of know the range and stuff it does yet. I haven't, uh, I know nothing about them. I've got it so I can just learn as I go along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the black lead to the negative of the battery, which is going to be this terminal down here. And now we're going to touch the springs, which should be feeding the backlight with this lead. And watch what happens when we press this button. So let's zoom in a bit. Right, so at the moment here, it's on 0.5 volts and the, the timing is 20 milliseconds. So I believe how it works is, you see this is like a grid. So each square now is 0.5 volts. So if we had a peak going up two squares, that would be one volt. And 20 milliseconds, that means each square going along here is going along in 20 milliseconds. So I can change the voltage. So for example, if I was to go up to 10 volts, each square now would be 10 volts. So if you had a peak of three squares, it would be uh, 30 volts. And again, I can go to the seconds here and I can change this all the way up to, yeah, 500 seconds. So in other words, now each one of these is 500 seconds. So it's gonna take a long time to go across 50 seconds. So near enough a minute. Do you see what I'm getting at, yeah? So I believe that's how it works, but I need to, use it a lot more and I need to watch a lot more videos on it. So let's just put it at 10 volt. Well, actually, let's change that down to uh, 0 0.5 volts and one second and we'll see what happens. So uh, zoom in a little bit more. Should I turn off this? Let me turn off this light so it's not shining in it. There we go. You can see that quite nicely. So watch this now. When I press it against this one here and press this button. So when I press this button, it's going to give the light for five seconds. Look what happens. Oops, hold on. Right, pressed it now. Right, okay. So it's, uh, nothing's really ha happening there. So let's change the voltage. Hold on. Let's press it again. Right, can you see now I'm getting a reading? Yeah. So let's change the voltage. to now one volt, two volts, five volts. Let's try to bring the signal down. 10 volts, okay. Let's press it again. See, now we're doing one second. So let's change the second because it's going quite slow. Each square is only a second at one and two and three. You see what I mean? So let's change that. Apologies if you know all about this because you're going to think, hey, I'm speaking rubbish, which I am. But as well as that, you know all this, but I'm doing this for people like myself that don't know. So now each one here is whizzing along at 0 0.2 off a second. So now let's press this button again and hopefully it will do something more meaningful. There we go. 
Can you see now? So we're starting to get a wave, so that, and, it, and that will last for five seconds and then go off like that. So that says to me that the actual circuit and the transformer and stuff's working okay. Let's just try to get a, a better reading. So let's bring it up to 20. The highest this will go to is 20 volts. So now let's do that again. Press this button. And there we go. Now I think the reason it takes so long is because it's only going along in 0.2 seconds. But look, can you see? One, two, three. There was about three or four things there, and it's 20 volts on each one, which says that it's going to be up on 60 volts. Let's quicken it up a little bit. Let's put it down to uh, 20 milliseconds right now. It should be more responsive when I press this now. There you go. Look at that. And isn't that lovely? Uh, one, two, oh, I don't know. It's about three or something, isn't it? So that's saying to me that there's 60 volts on that one. But if I do this pin, there's nothing really happening. So I presume this is going to be the positive and this is the negative, but saying that, why, I'm just wondering, why isn't, uh, if it's AC, shouldn't it be on both of them or something? But watch this now, if I do do it again, can you see it's not really doing anything? Ah, would I have to put the positive to this one? Would that, would that be how it works? Would I have to put the positive here and the, but no, that's just swapping the leads over, isn't it? Anyway, let's see what that does now. No, it's still not doing anything. But maybe that's completely normal. Remember, I don't know what I'm. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. But either way, there was definitely there's definitely a reading on this probe here. So just one last time. There you go. Yeah. So that's nice there. So that says to me, I think that this is working, and that's also the first time that I've used that. Now, what's interesting is if I was to do the same now, because I think before I measured it with DC. Uh, voltage on my multimeter. So just to show you with DC, it doesn't make a difference at all. So again, if I was to go to the, I'll tell you what I'll do to make it easy for myself. I'm just going to put the negative probe in the actual battery like that. Now watch this now. So uh, let's put it here so you can see it. Right here we go. So watch this now. Press the button and on here, which is what I would have done before and you see it's not doing anything. Yeah. Well, to be fair, it did do something, didn't it? It did, it did give a bit of a change of a reading. So let's do that again. Right, so it's showing one volt at the moment. Press that, and it goes down. So that would have confused me before, but look, after five seconds, it will go back up again. Yeah, so I suppose that would sort of hint that the circuit might work. But look, if I put it onto AC, it does now give me a reading, but it's very low. Yeah, so again, if I go here, watch. Hold on. Wait until it goes off, and I'll do it again. Right, okay, so we haven't got a reading. Press the button, and you see it goes up to just two volts. So if I had read online and people are saying it needs to be between like whatever 50 to 150 volts, then I would think that possibly the circuit's faulty. But it's not. I just maybe think that my meter's not quick enough or something to pick up on it. Or maybe it's to do with current. I listen, I haven't got a clue. But anyway, we think that the circuit's okay, but we don't really know. So what I did is I got the inside of the watch out. And what's interesting is this whole front bit here is the EL tape. And if you look very closely, you can see that one pad is just basically the whole thing. Yeah, so I presume it wouldn't make a difference if I touched that one, that one, or that one. But look at this one here. There's a tiny break. And that's, see where my nail is. So I need to touch there, not the middle bit. I presume if I touch there and that bit, that bit there should be the same as this bit. In fact, we can probably test that by doing a continuity test. So let's have a quick look on that. So if I was to go here and here, yeah, there we go, there, and nothing. So you can see now that if I was just to get a probe between here and here, it would make continuity, or here, here, and here. These are all connected together. So basically, the outer, the outer ring is like one bit of the circuit, and this is the other bit. So remember I said about the things flowing through? So it's basically jumping from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here, while on DC, it's just going this way all the time. 
Yeah, so it's alternating between the two. So now, if I do something bodgy, and if I turn the lights down low and get a couple of wires and attach them onto the springs and touch both those contacts, you will actually see this glows when I press this button here. So we know 100% that this thing here is faulty because I don't think it is to do with the voltage. Basically, I think the more voltage you put in, the, the brighter this will go. So it, it, I don't think it's the case that just because this is smaller, because if you look at it, it's still quite a big chunk off it, and this isn't glowing whatsoever. In fact, I can show you, I, I can show you on this and turn the lights down. So I'll leave the lights on for the moment, but I'm just going to put one wire in there and another wire in the other spring, because these are the springs that make contact with these two kind of carbon pads on this EL tape, the backlight thing. See this little carbon thing here and here. And the carbon things are definitely working because if I just go on each of them, but not touching my leads together, you can hear they're there. But obviously there's nothing between here and here because you wouldn't expect there to be because I don't think that that works like sort of normal continuity. But now if I was to go, I've got to be careful because I think, I don't think it will cause you any harm, but it is still a, a high voltage. So I'm just going to use a bit of tissue paper over that and tissue paper over here. Make sure they're in the right place there. Now watch this, when I press this here, we should see it light up here. But there's absolutely nothing, so watch. See, there's nothing, nothing there whatsoever. Yep. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna use a little Timex Indiglo thing. So let's turn this other light off here so you've got more chance to see it. It will become really clear when you do see it, it's kind of like obvious. So uh, I'm gonna press one bit onto here. Looks nice when it lights up. Apologies, it's going to be from the back. I hope I have these wires on. There and there. Now, watch, uh, I think that's it. Watch around the, the edge here. So let's zoom right in. Right, ready? Watch this. Okay, I'm not on there. One second. Or, you know, it, it could be because I was shorting. I might have been shorting it out. Let's get it on the very edge. Let's try that. There you go. Look at that. Can you see that lighting up nicely, isn't it? And it will go, last for five seconds and then go out. So let's do that again. There you go. Yeah. And that doesn't happen. You can see, you can definitely see the difference between it going on and off. And that doesn't happen with the original one that came with it. So 100% it's 40 EL tape, which is a real shame because it means I can't fix it. But apparently you can buy them. It's just that, uh, yeah, I don't know how easy it would be to get that shape. I suppose it doesn't really matter. You could just get it and get it with some wires and then you could just solder it onto the two contacts here. So it would be fixable. The other thing, of course, to do is kind of make your own because we know the switch works. If I could find out what's in control of the timer off those five seconds, I could possibly wire something up before this transformer because all the timing part might be done on DC. I think it's after the transformer that it becomes AC. So I might be able to wire something up. Realistically, is it worth it? You know, for something like this, probably not. Uh, it works as a clock. It's just if you were to have it on your bedside table, it wouldn't work. Rather than putting a kind of LED, I'm just thinking sort of out loud, I don't know if I've got any LEDs lying around the house. I might do, you know, I might do. I'm not too sure. But I think before I do that, I think I'm going to take a closer look at this just in case. I mean, it's broken. It's not working anyway. I'm going to start scraping away at it just to see if it's kind of obvious where this doesn't meet this. Maybe it never worked in the first place. You know, maybe uh, maybe if I start scraping it away, I'll be able to see that there's sort of some sort of like a luminescent stuff missing or something like that. So I'm just going to do that off camera for a bit and then uh, I'll get back and just let you know if I found anything or if I found nothing at all. Just before I destroy this completely, I believe how it works is that there's two strips on this, like, uh, so on the wire there's like a central conductor and then the outer one, well this is working in a similar way where one side will be the central conductor and then one would be the outer one. And if you have a look here, I'm thinking I was confused before about why there's, I know why there's carbon on this side, but this side has like a, a shiny plastic thing on it. and. 
with this side here, that was me that put the bend on it by the way, you can also see carbon on this side. So maybe what happens is this side is connected to this bit of carbon and maybe this carbon is connected to this side here and maybe but it's not connected to this side and that might be how it sort of makes the circuit or something. So uh, yeah, I don't know but I'm going to start scraping around and see basically what's happening with it. Okay, unfortunately I can't find out what's wrong with this whatsoever, but just to show you what it should look like in the watch, can you see now when I press that, it's lighting up. Now as far as this is concerned, it's working just like it was before, so the alarm's working, and the button at the back, that's all working fine, so if I hold that down for a couple of seconds, you will see it will start flashing here, and then I can just press this to change the time. So I mean, it's much better than it was originally, it's just a shame that I couldn't get it working 100%, but for me it was definitely worth it, because now I know about this, I've never seen anything like this before. I've only ever seen like little LEDs or for example lights down the bottom and a mirrored finish going up to backlight the display. I've never seen anything like this so I think it was uh, amazing. What's a bit confusing for me is I was messing around here, I've scraped off the carbon track here and here and uh, with this, it all looked absolutely fine. I can understand if there was a break here because then it wouldn't make a contact with this material in here that does the lighting up. But it all looked absolutely fine. I tried scraping it back here and here just to put the probes on here to see if it would do anything. That still didn't work. So I don't know why something like this has failed. I mean, it shows that this has failed, but part of me wonders if this isn't given enough voltage to make this work. But saying that, it did light up this nice and easy and I don't think it would make that much difference that size or this size. I'm pretty sure this should still light up dim if it was working so obviously it's not it's not flowing through there is it? But uh, yeah I enjoyed it thanks a lot to all the comments. I liked for the first time messing around with this little scope here and uh, learning a little bit more about this so now if I see this in the future I will definitely know what it is. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.